sunshine smile Heard the roar of a plane as it sailed through the sky To a playmate she cried with a bright twinkling eye My daddy rides that ship in the sky Oh, my daddy rides that ship in the sky My daddy rides that ship in the sky Mama's not afraid and neither am I Then a pug nose kid, as he kicked up his heel, says, My daddy works in the iron and the steel. Yes, my daddy makes planes, so they fly through the sky, and that's what keeps your daddy up there so high. Let's go back about 200 years. That's a picture of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which you guys are fortunate to live very close to. If you lived 200 years ago, you might live in a house like that, a log cabin, and the logs would come from the trees right around you. And you wouldn't go down to Walmart for your food. You'd grow some corn and some other stuff in your garden, and you'd have some chickens to get your eggs. And for your meat, you might eat a hog, part of a hog that your, your dad or mom butchered, but most likely, most of the time, you might be eating some food that you went out and hunted. And that's a hunting dog, and he's treeing some animals up there. Might be those raccoons. That's from a separate picture. I'm going to show you a little dog that you might want me to make for you out of this balloon, okay? I'm going to make a little snout. Okay. Put some ears on him. Mm, let's give him a neck. And a couple of legs.
left behind. We'd have to come back and get you. You better wait till you're a little older. But that little boy, they lost the They went across the creek, got the bridge into the holler, and that little boy, he was keeping up with them for a while. But those thugs, they started going faster and faster, and the little boy was going slower and slower and slower and slower, and finally he got into some rush, and finally he tripped over a log. He got himself up. Couldn't hear those dogs anymore. They were too far ahead of him. He took out his horn and he blew for blue. Oh, where are you? Oh, where are you? All he could hear was that old owl. It was on mosquito. Recycling, maybe how you use things in new ways okay well in the old days when you got these big old holes in your blue jeans like he's got and your mama said uh uh no more wearing those blue jeans she didn't just throw those blue jeans out she took the blue jeans and she cut out squares and shapes out of the good part of the blue jeans she did that with all the leftovers for the clothes, and then when she got a nice big pile, she'd say, it's time to make a patchwork quilt. And she'd sew those patches together, and she'd make something new out of those old things. Now, here are the motions. I want you to put on a pair of glasses for your grandma, because you know our eyes get old. On my grandma's, and probably the first place you need a patch, it's right here because you're sitting on it all the time. So for patch, I want you to kind of hit your bottom. Patch work. And for quilt, I want you to pretend you've got a needle and you're sewing. Okay. All the grandma's patchwork quilt. Let me see it. Squares of corduroy and silk. Then green and blue. And yellow too. All the grandma's patchwork quilt. I was singing with some kids back in a little community center way back in the mountains and it rained and poured and when I went to drive out of there I got to that valley and the water was about this deep I couldn't get through it I was water bound can you sing that with me yeah. water bound in a naked home water bound in a naked home water bound in a naked home man in your life There's loads of books and loads of tales about Anansi, so be sure and check some of them out at the library. This is one where Anansi is no, not so much a trickster as he can't control himself. They ever talk about self-control with you here at school? He has a problem with said, Anansi, I have to go to the store and get some more spices. You continue doing your work, and when I get back, I'll put in the spices and we'll cook dinner and we'll have a wonderful meal. But Anansi, she said, whatever you do, don't go and touch those beans. They're very hot and you could burn yourself. What did I say, Anansi? He said, I won't touch those. He found himself standing right in front of that pot of beans. 
Well, she said, don't touch the beans. It won't hurt if I smell them. Took the top off. Oh, Anansi loved beans. He said, it won't hurt if I just take a taste. Grandma doesn't have to know. Sitting right there was her wooden spoon, and it looked kind of lonely, so Anansi picked it up. And he took a taste. He took it out of the bowl. He blew on it. Maybe just one more. Maybe another. I've had three. A fourth one's not going to make any difference. Well, Anansi got to thinking he'd like some more of that. He wanted it to cool faster, so he took off his hat and he put the beans in the hat. Well, a moment later, there was some yelling out in the field. And some neighbors were yelling, Get out of here, you nasty birds! Get out of here! Get away from Grandma's beans! Get away from here! Well, the birds suddenly flew in the kitchen window where Anansi was, and the neighbors started pounding on the door. They said, Anansi, let us in! Let us get those birds! They're eating Grandma's beans! Well, there was Anansi, all those people at the door, and Anansi had those beans in his hat. You think he wanted them to see him with the beans in his hat? No. Hide him. Where do you think he could hide him? Uh, Where can he hide him? So he could go to his what? He could go to his room. He could go to put him in his he room. Could... Hmm. Yeah, that's an idea. Put it on his head. Put it on. That's exactly what Anansi did. He grabbed those beans. He put them on his head. Yeah, but you know those beans had not had a chance to cool yet. <gasps> he felt those beans on his head. Imagine that all those hot beans, and then he opened the door, and the neighbors came running in, they chased away the beans, and then they started to leave, and they saw Anansi standing there like this. They said, Anansi, what's wrong? He said, nothing's wrong, you can leave now, you can leave now. They said, but Anansi, you look like you're in pain. Did those birds hurt you? He said, no, no, he said, I'm fine. You can go now, you can go now. Well, Anansi was starting to sweat. The sweat was pouring down his face, he was starting to cry from the heat. They said, Anansi, no, we need to help you. We're your friends, Anansi. Let us help you. Anansi just wanted them to leave. They wouldn't leave. He said, no, it's all right. It's all right. They're fine. I'm fine. You can leave now. His voice was getting higher and higher. They said, Anansi, let us help you. Anansi was going like this. And he grabbed his hat and he started to move it around, so to move the beans around. They said, Anansi, what are you doing? He said, it's a dance. It's a dance. He said, what kind of dance? He said, it's a hat shaking dance. It's a hat shaking dance. They said, Anansi, that's a wonderful dance. Let us do it with you. So they all got up and they started doing the hat shaking dance. Go ahead, do it with me. And they started shaking that hat every now and then. They go, woo. Well, Anansi could see they weren't going to leave. He figured he needed to get rid of them. Anansi went out the door like this, and they followed him right out the door, doing the hat shaking dance. <laughs> the people were out in the fields, and they saw this long line of people going up the road doing this crazy thing. They said, oh, that looks like fun. They all got behind. Well, there was this long line of people going up the road going... <laughs> well... Down the road from the other direction came Grandma with the spices. She saw this crazy bunch of people coming down the road, and right in front of them was Anansi. She thought, what on earth? Well, Anansi got up to Grandma, and he finally could not stand the heat anymore. He grabbed that hat, and he pulled it off, and the beans went flying everywhere. The people looked out. They couldn't figure out what happened. Grandma knew what happened. She said, Anansi, I told you not to touch those beans. Suddenly a light bulb went on and everybody understood what was happening. They started laughing. Anansi had hot beans in his hat. And Anansi, poor Anansi, his hair was all burned off of his head. And when they started laughing, he was so embarrassed that he ran off into the tall grass. And, you know, to this day, that's why spiders are never out where you can see them. They like to be in the tall grass, they like to be in the corners. And they say that it's all because of Anansi and the pot of beans that he was so embarrassed about what happened.
Guitar, hold up the neck with one hand, strum with the other. Ta da ta da ta da la guitar. Ta da ta da ta da la guitar. Then sing. By you stayed, by you stayed, which means you go too. By you stayed, by you stayed, a la pulga de San Jose. You go to, you go to, to la pulga de San Jose. That's it. This goes under your chin. This goes up in your hand. Hold up your violin. You need a bow to play it. A stick with some horse's hair. Hold that with this hand. Lean, lean, violin. Tune, tune, and tune, tune. Lon, lon, violon. Lean, lean, violin. Nete, 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 clarinete. Ta da, ta da, ta da, la guitarra. Bye, you stay. Bye, you stay. La, la, pulga, la, san, jose. Bye, you stay. Bye, you stay. La, la, pulga, la, san, jose. The Irish eat lots of potatoes, and in the old days they used to really depend on those potatoes. And this is a story about Jamie O'Rourke and the big potato. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in Ireland. He would do anything to keep from working. He would sit around all day, and his wife Eileen would say, Jamie O'Rourke, we'll have nothing to eat this winter if you don't get up and pick out the praties. But then one day, Eileen really did hurt her back, and she was laid up in bed, and Jamie had nobody to bring him his food. Well, you would think that Jamie O'Rourke would finally get up <laughs> out of his bed, get up out of his chair or whatever, and go out and dig out the praties. But remember, Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in Ireland. To himself, he says, with Eileen sick in bed, there'll be no praties. With no praties, there'll be no food. With no food, I'll starve to death. There's no telling how soon death will be knocking at my door. 
I best go and confess my sins to Father O'Malley so that I can go to heaven when I die. And so in the middle of the night, Jamie O'Rourke got up out of bed and started down the hill to the church. Well, about halfway down the hill, he heard a little singing and tapping. He come up nice and close and he pulled back the ferns. And there, sitting in the middle of the moonlight, was a, a leprechaun. He was tap, tap, tapping on his very shoes. And Jamie knew just what to do. He grabbed that little fella by the coattails and he held him up. Let me go! Let me go! cried the little fella. Not on your life, said Jamie. Not until you take me to your pot of gold. Oh, Mr. Mortal Man, he said. I'm just starting out in the trade and I've only got one or two pieces of gold. He says, won't you take a wish instead? A wish, says Jamie, and what would I be wishing for? Me, whose wife is sick in bed and can't get up and dig out the praties and I'm about to starve to death. Well, says the leprechaun, you could wish for a magic potato seed, a giant potato seed. All you'd have to do is plant it and water it a couple of times and you'd have the great biggest potato you've ever seen in your life and you could eat on that potato all winter long. Well, when Jamie O'Rourke got home and told Eileen what he had done, she says, Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but you're a fool as well. What are you going to do with this so-called magic potato seed? You'll see, says Jamie. I'll plant it, and you'll see. She did see. For in a few weeks, up out of the ground came an enormous potato. Fifty years ago in Ireland, the potatoes got a disease called the blight. It came across the ocean on the ships, and all their potatoes turned bad. You couldn't eat them. And those people who depended on them couldn't find anything to eat. They were all starving to death. And they lived in houses owned by the English who didn't treat them very well, all these poor people, and they kicked them out of the houses. This is a chapter book, tells all about it. It's a great historical novel, Nori Ryan's song. And so a million of them boarded ships and they came to the United States. And most of them went to work on the railroads. They were very important in and building. They had a work song that they loved to sing called Paddy on the Railroad. It's got a great chorus. <laughs> Riches on, I put me corduroy riches on to work upon the railway. Fill a me, ori, ori, a fill a me, ori, ori, a fill a me, ori, ori, a to work upon the railway. That's your point. Ori, a fill a me, ori, ori, a fill a me, ori, ori, a to work upon the railway. And imagine a long time ago, and you were. An immigrant who came to this country from another place, like many, many people did, and you had a farm, and a lot of things went wrong, but you still you did the best you could, and you felt like the land. First came to this land, I was.